On the next available page in your notebook, title it Plasma Membrane Notes. Make sure there's a page number and add it to your table of contents. In this picture here of a cell, you can tell that the plasma membrane has a lot of uh, depth to it. There's a lot of characteristics here and we're going to talk about those today. So the cell membrane or plasma membrane is a barrier that separates a cell from the external environment. Cell membranes are composed of two phospholipid layers. The cell membrane has two major functions. In the top left corner of your power notes, please write. It forms a boundary between the inside and outside of the cell. In the second function, it controls the passage of materials. In order to better understand how it creates a barrier, and how it controls what goes in and out. We're going to take a little detour. So pause your notes for just a moment and bear with me. We'll get back to them momentarily. What we need to discuss is water. Now, water is extremely important to life. It's essential. In fact, when we look out into the galaxy for life, what we actually look for are signs of water first, and then we'll look a little bit closer. I enjoy it. I recommend drinking it on a daily basis. Now, why is water so important to life? Well, it has a high specific heat. It's uh, cohesive and adhesive, and it's a wonderful solvent, among other properties. And all of these unique properties that make water so essential come from the molecule's shape and polarity. So let's take a closer look. A molecule of water contains one oxygen and two hydrogen. They are covalently bound together in what's called a bent shape. Now, the thing about these covalent bonds, which are formed by the sharing of electrons, is that the oxygen and the hydrogen are not sharing equally. In fact, the oxygen, because of its increased electronegativity, is going to have the electrons more often. And that's going to give it a partial, not a full, but a partial negative charge. And our hydrogens are going to end up with partial positive charges. This is what is referred to as polarity. We now have a polar molecule from this unequal sharing of electrons. The reason this is significant is that when one water molecule approaches another, these partial charges will interact with each other. Positive and negative attract, and that goes just the same when it's a partial positive and a partial negative. This attraction won't create a new chemical bond. We're not looking at a new ionic bond here, but rather intramolecular force, referred to as hydrogen bonding. Now the hydrogen bonding that we see between molecules of water are what gives it those properties mentioned previously. High specific heat. Um, it's less dense as a solid than as a liquid so that ice floats. It sticks to itself. It sticks to surfaces. And it is a remarkable solvent, referred to as the universal solvent. That makes water the perfect site for a vast amount of chemistry, including the chemistry of life. So what does this have to do with our membranes? Well, not everything dissolves into water. Some things are insoluble. And organic molecules that are insoluble in water are referred to as lipids. When we take a close look at our membrane, what we're going to find is the key players are phospholipids. And they have two parts, the head and the tails. And the tails are composed of lipids. They don't get along with water. The head, perfectly fine with water. The tails, not so much. And then those phospholipids are going to arrange themselves into a bilayer so that on the outside and inside surfaces of our membrane, water can interact just fine. But this entire interior space is what's called hydrophobic. It fears water. And so it creates this barrier to water, but also to other polar or charged molecules. And now back. Okay, in the top right corner of the power notes, write 
The cell membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer, which is a double layer of phospholipids that surround the cell. You're also going to draw a picture, so make sure that you leave space for the picture. So you're going to draw and label this phospholipid. To start out with, it looks like a balloon with two ribbons or two tails. So the circle is the head and it is polar. Since it's polar, it likes water, it's attracted to water, so it has a hydrophilic head that is attracted to water. The tails are called fatty acid tails and they are nonpolar. So they are hydrophobic because they fear or repel water. And so this is just one phospholipid. To have a phospholipid bilayer, you're going to have two rows facing oppositely or mirrored. Okay, the fluid mosaic model describes the membrane. So a mosaic is shown here, and in mosaics, um, it's a type of art. A lot of times they use glass or tile. Um, you can do paper, have different um, pieces of uh, paper that are different colors, and cut into small pieces, and then you assemble or they assemble um, the image by using those different colors. So here's some examples here. When you look at it close up, you can see the individual tiles or pieces. When you look at it from far away, the edges blend in and you don't see the, the different little pieces. It just looks like a, a whole smooth surface. All right, so with the plasma membrane being the fluid mosaic model. Fluid means that something flows, that it can change shape, it's not rigid. So in the fluid mosaic box on the left, please write, the membrane is flexible like a fluid and made up of many molecules like the tiles of a mosaic. Okay, here's a video to show a plasma membrane. The living machinery of the inner cell and the harsh conditions of the outside world stands the cell's plasma membrane. As crucial as this barrier is, it's surprisingly flexible. Push it and watch it move. Poke hard enough and it might break and begin to regroup. The lipid molecules of the membrane naturally assemble in a double layer because their tails repel water as their heads attract it. Throw in some cholesterol and a few carbohydrates and you have the basic structure of a plasma membrane. Within these lipid molecules, we also find different proteins which do various things for the cell. For instance, they receive signals from the world outside or they transport nutrients and waste. So nature composes the membrane with a combination or mosaic of different lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. And these molecules are not stationary. They constantly move within the structure, fluidly changing their positions. The survival of all life rests on this veil of material. A supple membrane, just two molecules thick. You should now be writing in the box that says other molecules. So several things are embedded or stuck in the cell membrane. Um, cholesterols. Cholesterols are the tiny little dots that appear to be kind of yellowish in color and they strengthen the plasma membrane. Also gives it the ability to be pliable. Proteins. Proteins are the large ones that are blue and yellow on the screen, and they aid in transport and signaling. So some of the proteins, the channel proteins, allow for things to go through the plasma membrane um, and get from one side to the other. 
And then you've got carbohydrates. Um, carbohydrates often stick off on the outside of the cells and allow the cells to aid in identification and communication. So essentially telling one cell what another cell is. In the box on the left that says sketch a semi-permeable membrane, please go ahead and sketch this picture onto your notes. And yes, please include all the details, including the carbohydrates, cholesterol, protein, and the phospholipid bilayer. Also, please label your diagram or sketch. Selectively permeable. This means that the cell will keep some things on the outside and allow some things to come on the inside. For example, this right here. It is modeling that water, the little blue sphere, is able to pass right through the cell membrane, whereas the larger orange oval molecule cannot. Now, in the space on the right that says selectively permeable, please go ahead and write these down as I go through them. Selectively permeable means controls what molecules can cross, and this is the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. Also allows the cell to maintain homeostasis. And the molecules can cross in a variety of ways, meaning can go straight through the membrane or it has help by a protein. And it lets some stuff in and keeps other stuff out. Now, at the very bottom box, there are two kinds of receptors. So if you would please go ahead and put the definition of receptor in first, which is detect a signal molecule and perform an action in response. So the first type being an intracellular receptor. And this one will bind to a molecule after it crosses into the cell. So the actual receptor goes into the cell in this model. The next one is a membrane receptor. This one binds to a molecule that cannot pass through the membrane and changes its shape to transmit it into the cell. So for this one, the receptor is on the outside of the membrane and that receptor changes its shape and releases the um, molecule to the inside of the membrane. 